May I? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes, Susie, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Hi, hi, Martha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we are the participants already in inside? Um, yes, because, we have um, uh, we have quite a few particip participants already online, and um, yeah, we can actually um, start. Okay. And um, um, okay, right. before yeah, Please. okay, be before anything, I just like to uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, to uh, to our tasting uh, entitled Flower Day today. So um, and uh, thanks for taking the time, uh, you know, on a Friday evening um, uh, to join us uh, to taste some wines and find out a little bit more about um, the wines from Mas Dian Gil. Uh, I'm Shah um, um, from Ewine Asia. And uh, I hope everyone at home, uh, for those of you participated, uh, you receive all your wines in good order in the in the little bottles and uh, together with your tasting uh, booklet and also um, the, the little um, the, the mat uh, to put your glasses and you know to, to have a bit of a like a live feel at home. And I hope the wines are uh, you also have had the time to chill the wines down a little bit, uh, especially for the white. And uh, yeah, so today uh, we'll be doing uh, um, a, a nice Zoom session uh, with uh, uh, for, for focusing on Mazdi and Gil wines from uh, uh, Priorat. And uh, we have Marta today, all the way from the winery from Spain, uh, joining us and um, here to share with us uh, uh, the story and uh, also she was a beautiful wine that she's making there and by the way she's in the middle of harvest and all so yeah thank you so much Martha for taking the time we really appreciate uh, um, you giving us the I know everyone is busy at the winery and all so it, it's really great uh, to, to, to have you here and uh, yeah perhaps you can um, you know introduce yourself and um, start telling us about your, your winery yeah please Martha thank you um First of all, thank you very much, Ewin Asia, to let us uh, be here with you in Singapore in a virtual tasting. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Olivier, my nice husband. To meet, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Olivier. Hi from thank Singapore. You he was a sommelier that visited us once and then we kept him here. So he's my husband. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Yes. Thanks, thanks for having us in Singapore. Yes. Uh, we are very happy to have your wines here, definitely. Yeah. Yes. So we are like working. So he just came to say hello. And okay. say <laughs> hi again. So we would like to, first of all, enjoy your stay further. No? Yes. Okay. <laughs> You're in good hands. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. See you, Oliver. See you. Okay. Okay. So we are today. Um, in Priorat. This is a um, very small area located in the south of Barcelona. You have direct flights usually with Singapore Airlines to Barcelona, which is a very interesting gastronomic city. And we are just one and a half hour south of Barcelona. So the state where we are now, it's Masdangil. It has been founded in 1860 but the region, it's 1000 years old. So it's a historical wine area founded by French monks coming from Provence. This is why you can find here in Priorat two main grape source, Grenache and Carignan that you also find in Rhone Valley and in Provence. So myself, I am the fourth daughter. So imagine my father, what a lucky man to have five women at home. So my mother and four girls. And so they, they are a wine, wine family. My mother came also from a wine family and my father also. And they overtook this historical estate some years ago, almost 25. And life it's like that i was the only daughter saying please don't overtake this winery it's too far away from our homes from oh really oh okay and finally who is here it's me no in life <laughs> never say no because then it's you that you know, it will come back to you 
Okay. So I'm very pleased to be here. I'm responsible for the state now since almost 14 years. And, and I want to show you just a little bit around just to figure out where we are. Okay. So Excellent. Priorat, it's a very hilly area. Yeah. So here, nothing is flat. You always have mountains or hills surrounding. Here, just behind us, you have the Bell Moon Mountain. That it's this up here, and cool. this is a pine tree mountains, okay. and just here, these are the 150 years old olive trees. Wow! So you have a mix of forest, olive trees, and just in between we have the vineyards. Okay. This is what we call the Belmoon village. Belmoon refers to the nice mountain, and also gives the name to our village wine the red that we are going to taste. Priorat, it's surrounded by mountains and the vineyards are planted in terraces or in um, like at the side of the hill. And this is the historical house, Mazdan Jill, founded by Mr. Jill in 1860. So we are very proud to continue the historical tradition of this house and state not 160 years later. Oh. And Mr. Jill was a very clever man, very smart. He designed this house as a little bit a Bordeaux chateau. So we get into the house. We have very beautiful um, floors, like from the um, modernist uh, style, Jungstil. I don't know in, in English now, sorry. And if we go here inside, this is the cellar room. The barracks are here. As you can see, here is where our red wines do the aging in barrique okay. in 225 liters barriques. Yeah. So most uh, of them are of this size, but we also have in a separate building, big food trays. For example, Bill Moon wine, our village wine, it's yes. elaborated in 3000 liter casks. Okay. What we have here are the Premier Cru and Grand Cru wines. Okay. In French oak, just light toasted. Yeah. Okay. Let's go nice. outside again. So let's close the line. It's very expensive in Spain nowadays, <laughs> the light. <laughs> but we have solar panels. Mazda Chile is very committed to the sustainability. So the whole state is organic certified. And we produce 50% of our energy with solar panels. Okay. So this is uh, important to us. So going back to Priorat, Priorat, it's surrounded by mountains of around 1,000 meters. So it's a kind of valley and all the landscape looks like what you have seen before, like a small hill here and another hill there. So all together, it's only 2,000 hectares of vineyards. So it's a relative small area. Yeah, in kilometers, it's 15 kilometers long and five kilometers bright. And nowadays we are 110 wineries in the whole area. Masdenjil, it's one of the two historical wineries. So it's one of the two oldest. And it's also known for the whites. This estate has been having old vineyards of whites since a long time. And Although Priorat, it's 90% red, right, yeah. this very little quantity of white maybe started here yeah, with white Grenache and Macabeo, also known in Rioja as Viura. So Priorat, it's 90% red and 10% white. And the most significant aspect in Priorat, it's this. This is not a piece of chocolate, no? Not really. <laughs> it's a 
a slate stone. As you can see, it's quite big. I have big hands, bigger than my man almost. Yeah, so imagine how big is the stone and how thick it's like. This is the, the typical slate of Priorat, and this is the slate of Belmun Village Vineyard. It's gray color, and this um, gives the personality and identity to Priorat wines. This mineral soil, the effect is that vineyards produce very few. Usually it rains not that much. It rains around 300 liters a year, while in other areas like Burgundy, you have 800 liters a year. So it's the half of other wine areas. And the effect is that the wines are more concentrate, more mineral, but our aim is to produce classic fine wines, uh, not concentrate wines. We know we are concentrate, we have higher alcohol content, but we try to do elegant wines with identity, fluent with balance, and that you can drink and enjoy this concentration in an elegant way. This is Belmont soil, but for example, you also have this slightly clear color, no? This is more, we call it orange slate because it has um, different color. And this is for Comavella. This is the Premier Cru. Just to show you some examples, it's a little bit thinner. And it has these spots, like, like summer spots. This is the typical slate for Comavella with these points. Yeah. So if you want, uh, we can start tasting the, the wines. Um, I have a, a presentation, Daniel, but I don't know if it makes sense that we start trying the wines and then we can go back to the presentation if necessary. What do you think? Uh, or we, we can ask people if they have until now any question. I would be very pleased. Oh yeah, um, um, for anyone who has any questions, of course, please, please feel free. You can just unmute your mic and ask the question or you can drop it in the Q&A section, of course. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe, Martha, maybe we taste we taste some wines first, then, then you can show your presentation. I think probably everyone's, you know, it's on a, it's on a Friday now, it's six o'clock in Singapore. And then so we have something everybody in waiting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good <laughs> idea. Okay. <laughs> see, let's move and see if the connection is working. Yeah. Perfect. So thank you, the team of Awin Asia, to make sure that everything has been organized, that you receive the samples and that you can taste the, no, the wines. One second. Yeah, is that okay? The perfect. Yeah. Okay, so I'm very pleased to present Coma Alta. Coma means little valley. Masdenjil has in total five valleys, okay. and La Coma it's probably one of the most beautiful ones. It's a long valley where the vineyards are oriented facing east. Okay. Yes, so this means that the vineyards receive the influence of the Mediterranean breeze, which is only 25 kilometers far away. So Coma Alta actually is in a single plot vineyard. It's a single vineyard wine of Argilo Calcare, which is quite unique. It's at the bottom of the valley the rest of the valley is a slate, but just at the bottom, you have this 0 0.6 hectares of Argilo Calcare, which means a white color terroir. Okay. And the resulting wine is what you have here. It's 100% Grenache out of Calcare. So quite exotic. Usually people think Priorat, red wine and slate. And here it's something completely different. It's white Grenache and Calcare. So for tasting this wine, I'm going to use this glass. This is a um, Riedel Syrah, a new world. We like very much this model, just to give you an idea. Okay. It's a 
white wine, but it's quite um, tall. It's like a tall woman. So we need a, a glass more indicated for red wines rather than for white wines, uh, maybe smaller glass or whatever. So we like a little bit this size, yeah? It's nice. The, um, the vintage, we are tasting it 16. For us, it has been one of the best vintages since 2004. Oh, it's okay. a grand millezime. And if we start smelling, of course, today we are not together. Yeah. And I will say what I feel here in Spain, no, okay. but please understand that maybe we have other smells, no, being no far away. Yes. <laughs> First of all, I can feel some uh, almond flower notes that remind us of honey notes. At the same time, I feel like peaches, like orange color fruit, like peaches or dried peaches. But also I can feel some anise, some fennel notes, like green herbs from the Mediterranean. In my case, I opened the bottle uh, half an hour before. Okay. All our wines, it's nice if you can open a little bit before because we are not in a cool area, we are in a relative warm area. So nice, need a little bit more time to open up. Okay. And probably the most interesting part, it's the palate, no? How we feel the wines in the palate. So I'm going to, to taste. This wine in the palate, it's, it's vibrant, but it stays in the center of your palate. So if this is your tongue, and this is the beginning, your lips, this wine, it's a wine that stays in the center, like quite straight. Yeah. No, you feel the wine, it's a little bit creamy yeah. at the beginning, but yes. it stays like in a, a line that it's, it's drawing a line in the center of your tongue and it goes to the back. The side of the tongue, it's not uh, sweet or it's not um, big, no? The reason is that we try to use the, um, the quantity of barrique that we consider necessary. We think that that wine, it's straight. It's like a knife that goes through your palate. It has a certain salinity at the end of your tongue that makes you salivate. Yes. And the barrique that we use, it's 500 liter used oak okay. of two years or three years. Okay. So it's actually, you can almost feel it. It's half of the wine has been in oak and the rest it's in inox. But the idea is to just have a little part of oak uh, to help for the aging. No, we are tasting today a five years old wine that it's yes. showing very vivid yes. and elegant. Just, it's not a young white wine. It's already in the second phase, the second period of this wine. And from now on the next five years, it's the phase that we consider more interesting this wine. Okay. So it's a white wine of a certain aging uh, capacity. No? In total, we say 10 years. So we're very glad that you have this white wine in Singapore because it's a very gastronomic wine. You can drink it with fish. You have lovely fish in Singapore. Um, I could taste it in 2019. No? Yes, <laughs> yeah. October. <laughs> yeah. And, but you also have nice meat. And for example, this wine, some gastronomic restaurants, they pair it with pork belly, for example. The smoke oh, note. Okay of the poor belly, the texture. Yes. The white wine that you can drink with fish, but also with meat, probably white meat. Okay. And also interesting it with cheeses. If you like to do a sorbent of cheeses, I don't know if in Singapore it's common to eat cheese. 
no? Sometimes in Asia, yeah, yeah, we do, we do in in the restaurants, we do have uh, cheese platters and all, and we wines and. Okay, so I hope you can enjoy it and feel this creamy, salty aspect on this wine. Yeah, definitely, we can get a lot of uh, the flavors you mentioned the. Uh, the the fruit a bit on the tropical notes but still with a very fresh acidity in the in the mid palate you get that freshness and um and it's already a five year old wine and you can see the development you get that um, notes of the uh, nuttiness as well and then um, yeah everything is showing a bit of that herbs you, you can get so very very nicely um uh, evolved wine i can say and uh, very balanced then there's still the acidity to go for i think many many more years and more than 10 years definitely for for i think uh, i i i may be wrong but definitely it's a wine can, that can we are spanish very, no? we, we try yeah. to be very humble maybe if we were from another european country we would say five more i don't know it's a question of human being yeah we but, try but, to make yeah. humble but very very beautifully made very very nicely balanced wines and um i just i i have a question um um you mentioned a premier crew uh, i mean uh, i mean is it based on a vineyard or um is it a premier crew vineyard or how how because we don't really see much of the word premier crew in uh, wines from priorat normally it's always the name of the area that that we see uh, maybe you can uh, yes. help us share because this one i think it's from a premier crew um, on our this list is, we have it on premier crew here we we like to use this um classification so in priorat in the last 10 years it has been working in the classification and it's like in Germany that um, some regions have created the classification a little bit in a similar way to the French, okay. no wines. So in Priorat, the name of regional wine, it's regional. Then the name of village, they use the Catalan word for Vide Villa, which is Belmont. And for example, in Germany, they say Ortswein. Ortswein, yes. But Ort's wine, it's ort, it's like place, and wine is, is wine. So the next step, it's in uh, above village wine, it's vide paracha, like premier cru. Okay. Uh, and it means a wine that comes from an area. So it's La Coma Valley within Masdenjil estate. So all our wines at, are made 100% from this beautiful area around me. It's one kilometer square. So okay. the um, La Coma Valley is the, the area. And then on the top of that, you have the Grand Cruz, that the name, official name now in Priorat is Viña Clasificada. So we try to do the translation because if it's like Germans, they write GG, like Grosses Gewex. So if foreign people don't know what is GG, they see these on the labels and they wonder what are these two letters? So we just try to make it easy to understand for the customers when we use these words, because we have to all accept that French, they created you know, the language yes. and, and the wine culture, and we admire them and we are all you know, following together a good path. And so German use the German words and they translate it no, sometimes. So yeah. we try to do the same. So the okay. official classification use Catalan words. And if we use the French, it's just to make a kind of translation to make it easy to understand. Maybe in 10 years, we can start using the Catalan words yeah. and people will know, but I think we are in this transition moment. Okay. So please don't misunderstand. We just try <laughs> to make it helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Definitely. Okay, cool. All right. See. So just to finish, this wine has been very successful. So who uh, the persons that have one bottle, just please keep it with lots of love. It has been very welcome and people really like this vintage. Okay. So if you have a bottle of this, you have a small treasure in your hands. Yeah. And it's very small uh, production also as well, right? About only, I think, 3,000 over bottles, I think you, you make for this vintage. Um, 3,868 okay. bottles. Okay, yeah. wow. Okay. Very small production, yeah. So we are very happy that 
some of them landed in Singapore. Yeah, I, I got to buy and keep some definitely. <laughs> okay. okay, thank, thank you, Martha. You want, okay. yeah. Let's cheers. Cheers, Singapore. Yeah, I cheers, Martha. You have thank good you. health. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. At home, we don't open that many bottles of these wines. We're just keeping for family reserve. So thank you for giving me okay. also the opportunity. <laughs> We're going to have lunch with you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to Singapore tasting. <laughs> okay, let's go to the reds. Okay. We have now Bell Moon Red. Bell Moon, you have the mountain behind me no this is the valley where it comes from and we have seen the gray slate before in this wine we have 20 years old vineyards from Velmon valley and we have mainly grenache and carignan and just five percent of cabernet sauvignon that has been planted in priority in the 70s and 80s and we just have two small plots here in maslin hill so even if we believe you cannot really feel it, we like just to be clear and say this wine is mostly Grenache, more than 60%, and then Carignan, and just this 5% Cabernet. Okay. The idea of Belmont is to be a nice fruit juice, a fluent wine out of Grenache and fresh. I'm going to clean the glass with the wine. I like to do that. Prior that we have not so much water, so we clean the glasses with wine. Yeah. Okay. This is a joke that people do here. <laughs> <laughs> but also to produce wine, we have very few <laughs> liters, so we have to be careful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, the color, it's not so concentrate no, in your glass. This is for us even an attribute in Priorat because usually wines are quite concentrating color and we try not to do so much extraction. So it's a beautiful rose red color, yeah, which is part of the identity of Priorat wines. Uh, 200 years ago, the wines of this region have been sold to France because French wines, sometimes they don't have as much color or alcohol. So they were used as mixed wines. So they blend it, okay. no? Like Porto wines in Portugal. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, so nowadays we try to just do wines from here separately. And what we have here, it's a wine um, made of the typical varieties, Grenache and Carignan. My bottle is a little bit close, so I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastic while okay. no, turning the wine, but maybe your bottle is more open. Yeah. yeah. The wine it's showing, it's expressing no this mix of terroir, herbs, and fruit. But what it's nice when a wine is complex, it's when you don't identify a single thing. If you only identify fruit, it's more for um, more maybe simple, simple. wines. Yeah. Here you have like different things blended together. And this is um, an attribute, no? It's when you have different things to smell combined, it's because the wine is more complex and it helps no to you have to pay more attention no what like smelling around what can i feel no and here i can smell like some rosemary like some herbal notes like thyme and 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 rosemary in terms of fruit maybe i would say like cherry like uh, red cherries But also if you imagine that you have seen the stones before and we have had some rain like going over the stones, like you feel this like 
um, stones in somehow like okay. if you have no the aromas of the stones after a rain no in oh, yeah, some no, yeah wet wet stones they call it or something yeah. and it also changes if you leave the wine like quiet and if you turn it again and it leaves quiet then it comes out it's a wine that shows you different no sides If you taste the wine and back again, this is your tongue. This wine, it has a certain present at the first half of your tongue, like it gets attached and then it flies, no? It has a more present here in the first part and then it's quite um, like fluid, no? And this is um, a characteristic that we really appreciate from this vineyard Okay. Because when you are sitting in a restaurant and you are eating, we like to have a balance, not only concentration, okay. we like wines for drink, wines not to think. We are the artisanals, we are the professionals, we like to do something very nice balance, but that you can sit in a restaurant and pour the wine or at home where I guess you are now and just enjoy it and enjoy. So it's a nice wine but not too complicated to no to to no to meditate it's just a pleasing wine no but behind that you have to know that it has been all hand picked all selected this vineyard has been picked in four moments okay because it's a, a vineyard that some parts first ripe and then the other part so the idea is that you have this vineyard picked at the right moment, selected in the vineyard, selected in the cellar, aged in foodres of 3,000 liters and also semen tanks of 3,000 liters. And at the end, you have this nice involving red wine from Priorat without being big or not to concentrate and not too heavy. A wine for many moments at home, we call it the breakfast wine, just oh, okay. a wine that oh. you can even drink for the breakfast because it's a fruit okay. juice. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I don't know if I would drink this or for breakfast. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's it's definitely um, most of the things you say, but I think there's still quite a bit of complexity there also as well. Definitely, uh, you get that um, balance. There's the there's the fruit. Um, the tannins are very beautifully, uh, it's not overpowering, you get a nice, it's a bit silky also in a way, you just get a little bit of it at the back, so yes, yeah, very fresh, very, um, very, and on the nose, the aromas, there's a lot of aromas there, I, I, I love the, the nose on this wine, and definitely um, you get all the red fruits, you get the, a bit of the herbs, as you mentioned, very, uh, really, very nice balanced wine, you can, you can just enjoy like that, um, but still has a nice, uh, you know, length and nice tannins a lot of flavors going on there but very very enjoyable definitely very nicely done beautiful one good thanks for the good description because um it's about that it's a, a kind of hidden complexity it looks yes. yeah they're, they're, you, and, and after a while when you when you, you swore a little bit and you, you get more and more things start to come out a little bit although it seems very easy and uh you know clean but you, you get the complexity starts to come out it comes after yes. and you enjoy it and yeah. this wine for us it's our no first um no step but for us we do it with lots of love because it's a more democratic wine okay. when i say that it's because the price is more affordable mm -hmm. but if we can um no arrive to the right people through this wine mm -hmm. they will see no it's a kind of presentation to must and chill artisanal wines and people will see mm, this is not just an entry-level wine it's yeah, something yeah. more serious yeah. so for people who are sensible you can appreciate that you have a very good value for this price yeah, definitely, yes? definitely and if you keep it in good conditions no if you have the possibility of have the wine 
uh, fridges and so on, no? Or I don't know how do you manage that aspect in Singapore, no? To Mine concert. fridge, definitely. Mine you fridge. have to have okay. that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So then you will really enjoy. And now we are tasting 16, but you can drink this wine the next 10 years also if you want. Sorry, in total 10 years, so the next five years. Okay. But we feel in that case that now it's the, it's the nice moment of this wine. Now the next three years, a kind of the youth of that wine. Yeah. So it's this nice fruit, complex, but fluid. And here we are. So this wine, we like it no, very much to, for tapas, no, for also risottos. This is a wine that you, it has a nice acidity that you can eat and drink and it's a good balance. It doesn't try to be the protagonist. You can have maybe very concentrate or spices, but sometimes we are surprised about the pairings because once we had a very spicy sauce and he was doing very well. So just, oh. just try and, okay. and enjoy it. And let us know if you find a good recipe. We have an Instagram called Mazdanjil, all the letters together, Mazdanjil. So if you like the wines and you want to follow us, we will be very pleased, yeah? Cool. Just to share that information. Awesome. Maybe just to finish with this wine. The name Belmun, it's also the name of the village, yeah, that we have just 500 meters um, down there. So Mazdanjil, it's at the top of a hill surrounded by vineyards. And the next village, close village, is Belmun del Priorat, which is one of the three main historical villages for Priorat wines. Okay. Porrera was known for Carignan. Belmun for Grenache and Gratallops, it's known also for Grenache. Yeah, these are the three, mean, okay. like maybe 80% of the vineyards and, you know, and are, are in these three villages. Apart from this, there are other eight villages. So in total in Priorat, it's 8,000 people living here. So we are very small area, yeah. Belmun del Priorat has 200 inhabitants. Probably it's the people in one building in Singapore. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So the third wine, and for today, the last wine, this is Coma Vella. The wine comes from La Coma Valley. For this valley, you have to come here. We have no Wi-Fi connection there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, welcome to come to Priorat. Yeah. yeah, we hope so. After showing us around your, your area, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful Singapore Airlines. We love this air, uh, no airline and the suits and the no personal. <laughs> very, very well, no professional company. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Wow, my bottle is doing very nice. I hope yours too. Ah. Wow, 2014 14. is showing now very beautiful. I'm very glad we have this vintage. 2014 was similar to this year. We have had a quite fresh August. And at the end of the harvest, we had, uh, at the end of September, we had some big rains. So it's a vintage that we call it the Burgundy vintage okay. because it has less Carignan. So in terms of colors, it's, um, it's a little less color than usual and less Carignan because Carignan has more color than Grenache. So it's a very delicate wine with a very nice uh, no, uh, smell, but more delicate. Probably Priorat wine has this combination of Grenache and Carignan, and it makes a nice balance of fruit and texture. And this year, maybe it's more, let's say, going to Burgundy style, more, more delicate wine. Yeah? More delicate, okay. We have the fruit.
for me maybe like fix some some fix but not not dry like fresh fix a little bit darker fruit than before like pr prunes now sorry yeah, now i am trying to find a word in english like um this is a fruit that it's from outside purple and inside you have a um, is it plums or ah, yes, that's plums. Yes, okay. some plums. In in my case, because maybe you are smelling other things right now. Also, this type of um, fennel notes, but in somehow it looks like very young. If we taste sixteen bay moon and now this, the fruit it's like, for me like showing younger than the bay moon. In somehow it's a kind of strange, yeah. You know? Here we have 40 years old vineyards are older than the first one. So when you have this wine in your palate, it goes more into the center. The first wine was more in front of, and this is more sitting in the center of your palate, involving your tongue. But once you have drink the wine, no, um, then the palate remains balanced. No, it's like a full, uh, remaining of flavors and you no know, aromas, but not having like a kind of weight, you no, know, or, or yeah. you know, unpleasant texture. It has a presence that goes through your palate, but once you have drink the wine, it's like a nice remember, you no. Know? So for this wine, you have to sit down, share a nice food, maybe some lamb cook on fire. <laughs> and maybe some rosemary on the top or some tuna fish if you like it like grill so this is a wine where you can go up into complexity it has yeah. a little bit more weight than the Definitely. first one yeah. and as you can see it's 14 it's now uh, seven years old and the the old people here in priorat they always said priorat wine it's good after six or eight years okay. <laughs> say okay then it's a good <laughs> investment for winers but they have the truth no if you have kept the wine in good conditions yeah. you start to taste now the elegance of priorat wines that have bottle aging since in this in this case since 2016 okay. so you have a wine in your hands that it has been five years in bottle what the and these five years of bottle aging for priorat wines, we feel it's very elegant. Yeah. I'm also reading here some comments. Yes. Yes, real beef cubes. Definitely. Yeah. I'm getting hungry, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. gone. And my <laughs> husband is waiting with the, with the okay. lunch. You know, I said, uh, until no, uh, still we have time, but I'm getting hungry after your <laughs> <Okay>. comment. <laughs> cool, yeah, definitely. You can you can see the yeah, there's more more structure, more complexity. Uh, I even get a lot of uh, tertiary notes. You get um, uh, as you say, a bit more on the figs. You get a bit more. There's some black fruits also as well. It's uh, more structured. You can feel the tannins, but still, uh, you mentioned it's not overpowering is not uh, going all over the, the flavors but very nice balance the acidity is still very you get that nice even a bit of that minerality to it as well, as well. very nice you get that not not too um, intruding you know it's, it's just coming in and, and the finish is very nice and long finish you really really enjoyable wine and then and, and I, I personally I like the nose wow it, it, it's, it's amazing it's, it's evolving it's changing so very definitely a very complex wine and very nice as you mentioned it's a uh, it's not uh it's 2014 more on the burgundy i get what you mean uh it's not uh, forward the fruit but you get that elegance you get that um the balance the acidity so yeah very very and nicely aged after after five years in the bottle very nice wine to enjoy yeah. I really like your explanations. Eh? Whenever I'm requesting today, <laughs> the Germans ask me to do a tasting next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, if you want, let's do it together. But I like your, <laughs> your explanations. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> thank thank you for that. No, it's Susie. your it's your wine. It's your wine. It's not me. It's your wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. 
So um, I'd like to answer the question. Yeah, that yes. someone, Sara, yes. uh, Sara, no. We started biodynamics in 2008 with six hectares. So this means we started with the Grand Cru floods. And in five years, we did the, the whole conversion to the whole state. So um, nowadays, all the wines are biodynamics, but of course, um, the longest one, let's say Coma Bella, it's longer in biodynamic than the village wine because we went from up to down. Yeah, okay. also to see the reaction of the vineyards and to have the experience. So Mazengil, it's 32 hectares nowadays in biodynamics and also the olive trees. We produce an olive uh, oil of these olive trees. The whole state, it's organic certified and the whole state, it's in biodynamic because for us, it doesn't make sense to say, okay, here we do biodynamic and here not. It's a kind of philosophy and way to, to take care. So for example, today at 7 a.m. in the morning, we were starting a silicate treatment, okay. which helps the skin of Carignan to get ripe. Because this year we have had 120 liters of rain since August 30. So it's a kind of fresh vintage. Priorat wines will have very low uh, alcohol uh, level, no? Okay. It will be a historical vintage for that. Oh, okay. And nice acidity, but we need the, the skin of the grapes to be ripe. So silice, it's the a natural basic treatment of biodynamic, help us to bring light to the vineyards and to make the plant understand, please keep on working. It's like a kind of coffee, just please keep on working. Because if they get the skins not ripe, then it's, uh, let's say, more rustic tannins, no? And we want elegant tannins. So we did that yesterday and today. We will, I, tomorrow we will repeat. It's like a kind of last minute coffee okay. to make the vineyards work. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So I hope uh, I could answer. So we are all biodynamic, but the lower level, lower level since uh, less uh, years, no? Okay. Yeah. Okay, understand. Mm. Okay, maybe uh, Marta, uh, since we are mentioning about biodynamics, um, maybe can uh, can you help explain? Maybe some of us we are not really sure the difference between the organic and the biodynamic, and uh, and because I had some experience where I went to a tasting in a, in a group of mixed people, and then when we speak about uh, biodynamic, they are like, oh, biodynamic, you know, they are very a bit skeptical, and uh, but organic, they are okay with it, you know then. And um, I, I, I'm, maybe this is a bit of a misconception. Maybe they don't know the difference or they, they, they're not so sure what, what it is all about. So maybe you can give us a you know, brief explanation so we can at least know a little bit of what, what biodynamics are all about. Yeah. Yes, um, organic wines are the ones that you don't use pesticides or chemical products in your vineyards that avoid the herbs growing in the vineyards. And, but you use sulfur and copper for the treatments. This is uh, allowed. But for example, in our case, we don't use sulfur coming from some petrol. We use sul sulfur coming from mines, like natural sulfur, okay. which is quite more expensive. Yeah. But um, it's, uh, you see the difference in the skins of the grapes. So going back, organic, it's when you don't use pesticides in your vineyards and you use sulfur and copper. And the idea is that you don't throw like bad things to your soil. Um, biodynamics, it's like uh, one step more. Uh, it's about uh, reawaking the life of your soil. Um, imagine that conventional agriculture tries to have clean soil. This means that everything it's, it's uh, death on the first layer of the earth. And for us in biodynamic, we consider that the first layer of the earth has to be alive because it's the skin of the soil. So if we have life in this first level of skin, then everything that goes below will make sense. If we kill the skin, then it doesn't help 
the the rest it's like there are different layers and every layer is doing a function no? so with biodynamics you reawake the life of the soil and then after five years minimum you start seeing the 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 seeds that naturally lives in your soil since hundreds of of years or, or thousands of years start reacting okay. instead of killing them but this requires more discipline uh, you have to do it at a certain moment so we work with the moon calendar that it's a astronomic calendar not astrology okay. this know-how has been the whole history in hands of the church so the church in the medieval ages they were telling the people when to seed the you no know, the um, the potatoes or okay. when to yeah. plant the you no know, the artichokes or whatever because they knew when it's the best moment according to these physical physical factors okay. that you get the best result so nowadays these calendars are affordable you can buy it for 15 euros you have to do a scholarship or, or a course let's say not a scholarship sorry for my english to learn how to use it and then when you work with the moon calendar you try to get the best um impulse or impact when, when you do a work on the on the plan that the effect is the maximum you can get yeah okay. so your clock or your planning has to be done with the moon calendar but it's complicated i have done three times a course for my team and at the end they say marta we do it when you think it's the day to do it because <laughs> okay. i like people to understand why we do the things yeah okay so oh. at the end what we have is that we want to have in the vineyards a similar soil of what we have when we go into the forest in the forest no one is taking care of that but there is a natural balance and with biodynamic we look for a certain balance in the vineyards because of course the man the human being is going to go into the vineyards and pick the grapes and cut if you go into a forest no one is cutting the tree but the tree is growing but the soil it's balanced because the, the leaves fall and then start the humus and so on mm -hmm. so with biodynamics we are creating this reawakening of the life of the soil and getting a nice structure so the result you have more healthy plants they can better resist illnesses for example last year it has been a rainy vintage and we didn't have so much illnesses as our neighbors or this year we have had that much rain now and we have champignons growing in the vineyards this is a very good example of the quality of the soil if you don't have life in your soil you have no champignons no, you have just um, slate and if it drains it's water erosion and for us it drains no erosion nice combination of earth my employees are a little bit angry because in the morning it's if it's humid like they have um, humid feet <laughs> oh okay <laughs> okay okay but okay this is but for the earth it's better like that yeah, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so that's it. yeah. it's I I hope I was short, but it's it's a little bit complex. I'm just a user. I'm I I learn um, with a coach. I have had two coach okay. until now and read some books, but um, I just respect all others. If someone wants to be conventional, it's yeah. okay. Of course, yeah. Uh, if they are organic fantastic probably some rainy areas it's better just to be organic okay. but in Priorat, with the level of rain it's quite easy to do organic and biodynamic okay but you have to deal with the herbs okay. Yeah. Okay. and what it's like your compost for next year we see herbs as the food for the earth no that you can reintroduce it no and it, it helps to give some food also to have a nice structure of the soil and it's to relearn how to work with the herbs okay my grandfather liked to have clean vineyards and oh, now okay. our generation is like to recover you know from that yeah okay. let's see what the next generation is going to do we don't know okay.
I think I think more and more wineries are moving into um, organic and also biodynamic. Also, I think we can we can see and also in the market also there's a lot of people. Uh, I mean, consumers are uh, are very interested in um, uh, these kind of wines. And anyway, anyway, generally it's 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 a more healthier product. It's a more healthier wine. Everything it's done much more better. And even in Singapore, also we we see a lot of people are uh, um, asking and. Uh, um, interested uh, to to know more about it and um, and um, also um, I mean they they like the style as well. Um, um, you can you can get cleaner wines, more balanced wines, and then there's more more uh, wineries doing it. Um, and also maybe just to clear uh, the the topic a little bit, uh, we have uh, we're talking about biodynamic. What's maybe we can know what's the difference between the biodynamic and also natural wines? There's like there's now there's this natural wine movement. People are making natural wines. You know, no intervention. Those kind of uh, things. Maybe it, and you can help us. You know, explain a little bit. Um, just at least we know a little bit. Uh, we know okay and biodynamic a little bit now and maybe um, you know the natural wine you can share with us what's the difference uh, I mean a general um, um, thing to know you know? I think biodynamic it's a clear way to re-establish the natural balance yes. in the vineyard and yes. then this of course affects after in the cellar and then for example when we do the bottle aging and or when we bottle the wine we bottle it in certain days of the moon calendar if you want to do younger wines and so on okay? okay but maybe biodynamics it starts with the basis that it's the vineyard yes okay. okay but natural wines maybe you have organic vineyard not biodynamic and here i think it's a very wide palette okay. of wildness that it means that do what you want yeah okay. in, in principle it's like natural wines to do as less as possible okay but the most important thing is that at the end, not everything is possible. At the end, I think we have to do elegant wines, but this is my subjective point of view. Yes. Because natural wines, maybe it means, first of all, not to add yeast. So for us, for example, at Mazdanjil Estate, the healthiest vineyards, we use nothing. This means, we take the grapes and they start spontaneous fermentations. Okay. Here we have like 10 wines done like this. Okay. And But for example, if I see a vineyard that it has been, maybe the grapes were not so perfect, we do a selection of yeast in our state and we do our pied de couf, no? It's uh, yeah. with our yeast out of, of ours. But natural usually refers that you do like a spontaneous fermentation. But what it happens if your vineyard was not so healthy or so on is that the resulting wines sometimes have some special notes in your nose, in your palate. Also, they don't filter that much, no? We, we just filter just to take out the, the, it's a very open filter. But they like to do like wines that are more unfiltered. And so that at the end, as less, uh, they do less, as much less as possible to okay. have a, a result. Okay. But the important thing, I think, to be serious in the business no, or in the wine branch, it's to, to offer uh, a good wine at the end. Yes. And what we observe is that sometimes, because it's natural, it can be smelling strange okay. because it's natural. Yes, yes, I do. I do come across that quite a bit as well. Yeah. And to do natural wines and to do elegant wines, it's 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 complicated. And also, if the wines need to travel, you have to be very careful that the wines don't have residual sugar and so on. Mm -hmm. So natural wines, it's a kind of very nice name. Yeah. But it's too white, and let's see the evolution. No, I mm -hmm. think what it's important is to be committed to your landscape yes. to do as sustainable as possible. I think I would invite everyone to be as sustainable as possible. And at the end, to do natural wines, it could be a, a direction, but very important, the result has to be a clean wine. Because if you offer something that it's not clean and you try to convince people that it's natural wine, maybe we are creating a kind of taste that it's not 
right. Yeah, it's like just that someone that has a nice character and appears to a tasting and it hasn't had a shower. Yeah. Okay, it can be a friendly person, but please take a shower. Yeah, okay. this is the this is my point of view. Yeah. And I think that everyone, no, but I think we all need to be clean and, and to be dressed with proper clothes. Yeah. Maybe today I come from the vineyards, no? And, but if I come to Singapore, I try not to come, no? No, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is a really good explanation. I mean, for, for me, I think uh, it all, um, maybe natural wine is a little bit, uh, yeah, you know, it has its following and has its uh, uh, style and the non-intervention um, um, uh, philosophy and all. But um, yeah, as you mentioned, it's not really very stable to begin with and you, you don't really know uh, where it, how the vineyard is actually so... You know, you're not really assured in, in, in some ways. To, I can say that you, you, you're not sure you can get a really fantastic wine or is it going to be a, you know, good or is it going to turn bad? So that's a bit um, risky on, on that part. Uh, so, yeah. And very important yeah. is to be everyone respectful. So if someone, yes. for example, I have here 10 natural wines, but I'm not going to go out and say, I have natural wines. No, because for me, all the wines we do come from grapes. We do biodynamics, which is very healthy for the earth. And at the end, then some of them are really natural. Some of them, I use the selection of natural yeast that we have here. For me, at the end, are all natural. And if a plot doesn't finish the fermentation well, I, I'm not going to bring it just because it's natural. Yeah. We are going to drink it in the family or with our closest friends. Excellent. This is my only concern about, but they have created a name worldwide and young people are like, oh, no. The yeah, natural. exactly. Yeah, it's, it's quite, so we're uh, it's, it's fashionable in, in a way. So yeah, you can say, yeah. And maybe better this than too much uh, chemic, no? but please, <laughs> good products, alien yeah. whites. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. Martha. Um, I mean, yeah, okay. Um, you wanted to show us a, a clip or something, um, a video I or you, you think, is it? Uh, Actually, I think it was a pleasant conversation if some of the, because we had a slide, if we want, we can send it to you for the people attending and they can have oh. a look at, at home because I don't know. I think it was <laughs> like, yeah, it's perfect. Good. Um, it's not that I want to leave it. I know. But, I mean, uh, we are already quite uh, uh, past the one hour no, no, mark. So, yeah, no, yeah. But if you want, I can show. Just. Um, I I think I think we are we are good for now. Maybe um maybe how about I ask everyone if uh, everyone has it, anyone has any questions perhaps you know um we, we want to know more or a little bit um please um, and we also have a poll ongoing if you can uh, fill up a poll and um and just yeah, feel free to on your un unmute your mic and um, um ask martha any questions um, can be anything about the wines in prayer her wines or anything just feel feel free um to ask right now yeah or you can just type in your um um, questions in the chat group also we can we can uh, progressively answer uh, for you uh, and uh, yeah. cool so probably we'll wait for the question but anyway Martha really the wines are showing very nicely and uh, uh, really uh, I've always been a big fan of your wine since we first uh, um, started to bring in and uh, and I met you two years ago in uh, in Singapore so it really was a pleasure and uh, I think the wines are doing uh, quite well there in, in a few good restaurants and um, so far we have uh, quite good feedback from uh, a lot of people from from your wines I mean uh, and uh, it's good to, I mean, be some for personally, a lot of, um, there's a bit of the mentality in when we taste Priorat wines, people expect a bit, a uh, very uh, big, rustic, structured uh, kind of wines. But, uh, but when, when, when we taste your wines, we can, we can feel the elegance, we can, we can feel the balance, we can, uh, we, we can see that, um, you know, a lot of um, um, care that goes on to, uh, to, to make this wine. So it's, it's really been a, a very nice tasting, good showing, the vintages are showing very well and uh, yeah and then, then you told me now 2016 is uh, something that I need to you know buy and stock up in my wine fridge and keep for a while so <laughs> yeah so all, 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 all is very good yeah um, yeah so far we don't have any uh, questions um, 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 I think everyone's um, quite uh, quite okay. I hope everyone at home, uh, those of you tasting the wines, I hope the wines are showing well as well uh, uh, for you guys and uh, and 
um, if, if you if you really have um, anything further maybe not today you you need any more info you can always email us we can find out from Martha next time and uh, and yeah it's it's, it's really a um, very nice session very informative uh, we get to know a little bit uh, about Priorat a little bit about uh, uh, Martha's wines um, she explained about the vineyards why it's premier cru grand cru so we know a little bit on the on the different different village the three main village so a lot of a lot of information uh, uh, for for this evening session uh, so I'm um, really really great Great. Um, let me check with Daniel. Daniel, we have any any other things we want to do first before we call, call it a, an evening or all, all good? Um, yeah, I think we're all good so far. We don't have any questions yet. So um, again, thank you so much, Martha. I hope to see you again in Singapore soon. Yeah, we hope to have, It'll you know, our... Yeah, we hope, I, mean, I hope to go there soon whenever whenever we, we have a chance next time. I definitely will. I want to sit at the blue chair just now, the, the one you were sitting at. The, yeah, and yeah. Then, yes, I want to enjoy a glass of wine and sit down there and just look at the vineyards below. So maybe It's maybe, a beautiful view. Yeah, yeah so that, that, we will not yeah. forget. Yeah. yeah, hopefully one day soon. Uh, anyway, thank you so much again. Um, um, for this, uh, for your time, and I know it's um, um harvest period and, and everything, uh, and also thanks to everyone uh, who joined us this evening, for those um uh, at home and uh, um you know I, I hope everyone um learned something and, and enjoy the the wines as well. So uh, if anyone needs, of course, uh, more of the wines, you always can contact Ewine Asia. We are we are here, and uh, and we look forward to see probably you know in the future in person next time. Yeah, hopefully the situation gets better then. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Marta. Muchas gracias. Yeah. And today you became Priorat ambassadors <laughs> after this hour, no, all together. So yeah. thank you for your interest. Thank you for being with us here in Priorat. Okay. And come soon. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Take care. Send my regards to everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay. Adiós. Okay.